Hi, I'm Isaac from Blazing SEO, the hottest proxy and server provider on the planet. Get it? Because, because hottest, because it's blazing. Proxies have become a foundational part of our world's tech infrastructure. They're used by big businesses and individuals alike. They're crucial to anyone who wants to reap the rewards of big data. And yet, many of the people who could benefit from proxies still have no idea what they are or how to use them. And there aren't any great resources out there if you're trying to understand proxies. I mean, you pull up the Wikipedia page and it's like, in computer networking, a proxy server is a server application or appliance that acts as an intermediary for requests from clients. And by this point, I'm already bored, opening a new tab and seeing what Twitter's up to. Huh? Tweets? So today, I'm going to try to explain what proxies are, why proxies are used, the different types of proxies that are available, and how you can get your hands on some reliable private proxies of your own. Every device that's connected to the internet is represented by a unique combination of letters and numbers known as an internet protocol address or IP address. Your IP address identifies your unique connection and tells the websites you visit where you are in the world. You can type what's my IP address into Google right now, and it'll tell you. Now proxy is a word that can mean a lot of things. You can have a proxy war, or a proxy financial statement, or a proxy murder. But if you're watching this video, you're probably most interested in proxy IP addresses. Also sometimes called proxy servers, but that term's not really accurate and we prefer not to use it at Blazing. This type of proxy lets you hide your real IP address behind a second IP address. There are basically four main reasons people use proxies. Anonymity, security, location switching, and data scraping. Anonymity is probably pretty obvious, right? Because proxies hide your real IP address, they allow you to use the internet without giving away your identity or your physical location. You know how big ad tech companies show you those creepy, hyper-personalized ads? Like, you'll just be talking to a friend on Discord and you'll mention the name of a Nine Inch Nails song, and then the next day Amazon's sending you emails about their latest album, Spotify's selling you concert tickets, and Twitter's recommending that you follow Trent Reznor? Companies can do that because they're all tracking your unique IP address, and they've tagged it with person who likes Nine Inch Nails. So by using a proxy, you can keep those companies in the dark about how you're still listening to Hurt multiple times a day. <sighs> he still gets me. Another big reason customers use our proxies is to improve the security of their network connection. Even if you trust big search and social media companies with your data, the process of collecting said data is very vulnerable to bad actors, like hackers. Proxies provide an extra layer of protection between you and said actors. Hackers might be able to gain access to the proxy, but they won't be able to gain access to the server where your data is actually stored. And if you're going with a provider that offers free automatic replacements, like we do, it's easy to swap out a compromised proxy for a safe one. Remember, your IP address indicates where you are in the world, usually down to the city level. So when I use my phone without a proxy, the sites I'm visiting can tell that I'm located in Lincoln, Nebraska. But this location addressing is part of any IP address, including proxy IP addresses. So if I use a proxy that's location address to Vancouver, even though I'm still in Lincoln, the sites I visit will see me as a Canadian visitor. Now I can finally see all the secret poutine recipes they've been hiding from us. Ça c'est incroyable! There are many reasons people want to location switch. Citizens of countries whose authoritative governments have blocked certain social media sites use proxies to make their voices heard. Frequent travelers use proxies to access internet from their home countries while traveling abroad. And movie and television fans use proxies to access content from streaming services that aren't available in their home country. Although we can't condone such usage unless it's expressly approved by the terms of service of the streaming sites themselves. Location switching can also lead to faster network speeds for certain use cases, most notably gaming. If you're located outside of the United States and your favorite game only has servers in Los Angeles, you can use an LA proxy. 
Because you're connecting from somewhere closer to the actual server, you'll experience less lag, which means you'll have to blame something else the next time you get bodied. Data scraping is a very important and complicated use case. It's such a significant topic that it'll probably get its own video on this channel at some point. But broadly, data scraping, also known as web scraping, is the automated process of collecting publicly available information from a web page. The name comes from the idea that you scrape the information that's relevant to you from the rest of the content on the page. For example, our partner company, Scraping Robot, provides a Facebook scraping tool. You give it the URL of a Facebook group and the scraper automatically returns the group's likes, follows, and check-ins, along with a complete list of the posts made by that group and the reactions those posts got. The benefit of scrapers is that they can visit thousands of pages a second and extract the data from those pages much quicker than the human eye can. The downside of using scrapers is that their behavior looks nothing like that of a normal human using the internet. This means that sites that don't want to be scraped can identify scrapers very easily and block their IP address. That's why scraping bots are designed to function with lots of proxies. When one IP address gets banned, they can automatically switch to another and pick up scraping where they left off. Depending on the size of a data scraping project and how strict a site's anti-botting protections are, finishing a whole data scraping project might require up to tens of thousands of proxies. Up to this point, I might have been giving the impression that one IP address is basically the same as another, but that's just not true. There are many different types of proxy IP addresses with different pros and cons. Here's a high-level overview of the key differences. IPv4, short for Internet Protocol version 4, was the first type of IP address that became commonly available. It was deployed in 1983 and is still used by most web traffic today. But there's a problem with IPv4 addresses. We ran out of them. There were only ever about 4 billion, and while that sounded like a lot in 1983, we had no idea how many internet-connected devices we were going to create over the next 40 years. So a new version was created, Internet Protocol version 6. IPv6 addresses work the same as IPv4 addresses, more or less, but there's a lot more of them. Exactly 340 undecillion. That's a billion, 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 billions. Because there's a lot more IPv6 addresses, that type of proxy is a lot cheaper. And because they're so new, you're more likely to get an IP address that has never been used before and that won't have been banned from a site you want to use it with. But the benefit of IPv4 proxies, on the other hand, is that they work with every website on the internet. Some websites still haven't switched to IPv6 compatibility, and while we'll get there eventually, we still don't have full adoption yet. My recommendation? Start with a cheap, clean IPv6 address if you can, and then if you find it's not working for your use case, switch to an IPv4 address. We mentioned that IP address stands for Internet Protocol Address, but what actually is the Internet Protocol? Well, it's a set of standardized rules that governs how packets of data are transmitted over a network. Right now, this video is being transmitted from YouTube servers to your device following the rules of the Internet Protocol. But there are many other rules that integrate with the IP to provide additional functionality. One that you might be familiar with is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. This is what web browsers and servers use to communicate with each other. And it's why you see HTTP at the start of every website's URL. Although, these days most sites are using HTTPS, which is a more secure version of the same thing. Socket Secure, or SOX, is another protocol that does more or less the same thing as HTTPS, but it uses a more universal connection. There are many reasons you might want to use an HTTPS proxy over a SOX proxy, or vice versa, but broadly, you should know that SOX proxies can be used with more applications and are sometimes seen as more anonymous, while HTTPS proxies are better for tasks that involve interpreting internet data and traffic, such as data scraping. Semi-dedicated proxies, also known as shared proxies, can be used by up to three people at a time. Dedicated proxies, conversely, are the sole property of a single user. If you have the choice between the two, dedicated proxies are almost strictly better. 
They're faster, and they grant you full control over your proxy usage, which means you don't have to worry about someone you're sharing the IP with doing something suspicious that'll get you banned from a site. However, semi-dedicated proxies are a lot cheaper, making them an acceptable compromise for users on a budget. Rotating proxies assign a new dedicated IP address for every connection. So if you have a piece of software that's making a thousand concurrent network requests, those requests will be made using a thousand different IP addresses. As you can imagine, rotating proxies are more expensive than either dedicated or semi-dedicated proxies but they're ideal for use cases that need to maximize anonymity and minimize the risk of getting banned. They're especially ideal for use cases that require huge numbers of proxies, like web scraping. So there you go. In just a few minutes, you've become a real proxy expert. But if you'd like to learn more, we have lots of resources available. You can download our free ebook, Proxies 101, by going to blazingseollc.com. While you're there, you can also check out our blog, which has hundreds of in-depth articles and more being published every week. You can also watch other videos on this very YouTube channel. If you're done with learning and are ready to make your browsing experience safer and more private with some proxies of your own, go to blazingseollc.com slash proxy. There you can get a two-day free trial of any of our proxy IP addresses, which we truly believe are the most reliable proxies on the planet. We work harder than any other company to prevent bans. We offer unlimited threads and unmetered bandwidth. We have a large number of locations available, and we offer free automatic replacements if a particular IP address just isn't working for you. Learn more, get a free trial today, and see the Blazing SEO difference for yourself at blazingseollc.com proxy. I've been Isaac, thank you for your time.